Hi, this is the welcoming video for Introduction to Ethics for Spring 2021. My name is Rob and I will be your instructor this term. I use he, him pronouns. Uh, so just a quick note about my name. Whenever you see it on Canvas, it's going to appear as James Loftus. And that's because when I took this job 14 years ago, it, uh, they just read my name off the form and my full name is James Robert Loftus. So I appear in the system as James Loftus, but please call me Rob. If you go by a name that, appear, that is different than what appears in the system, or you would like to specify what pronouns you use, you can do that in the introductory forum. Um, you actually have to post something in the introductory forum in the first uh, 14 days of the class just to confirm that you're actually attending. If you have a disability and need an accommodation, you are legally entitled to one. To arrange it, you should contact the Office of Accessibility Services. Uh, you should also talk to me early in the term. The contact information for accessibility services is on the screen. In general, there, uh, the school has a wide variety of resources to help people get through the semester. This includes both academic resources uh, and social support, including things like uh, food and income assistance, utility assistance programs, child care services, mental health, addiction, and personal counseling services, transportation. They'll even give you um, gift cards for gas money if you have trouble getting to school, um, and housing assistance. Uh, there are legal services um, and services for victims of sexual assault and domestic violence. So this is the main book we'll be reading this semester. It is Evicted by Matthew Desmond. Um, the book follows eight families, some with children and some without, as they go through the process of eviction. Uh, while he's doing that, he also follows their landlords, and there are two landlords, one who rents to the uh, black tenants and one who rents to the white tenants. And the author is interested in the eviction as a process where rich and poor meet. So this video here is from the author's website. It's justshelter.org. Um, and this has resources and advocacy for people who are facing eviction. These movies are actually movies that he took while he was researching this book. He's a sociologist, and he uses both quantitative and qualitative methods. That is, he follows individuals around, and he comes to understand their stories, but he also puts this in the background of some quantitative some statistics about housing and homelessness in the city that he's studying, which is Milwaukee, uh, which is actually not so different than the cities around here, Cleveland, Lorraine, Elyria. One of the things I like about this is that he views poverty as a relationship. Um, it's not just a state that an individual is in. It is a product of the relationship between ultimately rich and poor. And that's why in this book, he actually studies both landlords and tenants to see how they both go through the process of eviction. This course, however, is actually a course in philosophy. So although we're going to be doing a lot of sociology, we're going to be hearing a lot of people's stories. Ultimately, the goals that I have for this course are philosophical. So the way I put my idea for this course together is that the course is going to give you tools to think about the ethics of complicated situations where every event has many causes and many different people have control over their causes and a largely different set of people feel the effects of the event. So the example of this kind of event is eviction, but this is actually sort of a ubiquitous problem in ethics. Um, ethics aren't typically just dilemmas that one individual faces, that, although that's often the way it's put, like here's a choice, what do you do? Um, there are complex interactions between many people. Um, some have more power than others and some feel more of the brunt than others. Um, 
So, so ultimately, the concept that I'm interested in is the uh, one of the deepest philosophical concepts there is, justice. And a lot of what I'm trying to get at with this course can be captured by this quote from Brian Stevenson, the civil rights lawyer who works on death penalty cases. He says, in my work with the poor and incarcerated, I'm sorry, my work with the poor and incarcerated has persuaded me that the opposite of poverty is not wealth, the opposite of poverty is justice. So for a lot of this course, we're going to be trying to think about this idea from a philosophical perspective. Okay, the schedule for the course, more practical stuff here. The material is broken up into 15 weeks. So there are uh, 15 one-week segments. Uh, the material for each week is due at the end of the week, Sunday at 11.59. There is, however, a no-fault lateness policy. You don't need a reason to get an extension or to turn in anything late. There's no final exam. Um, the last week is just going to be a buffer zone to get done all the things that we didn't get done in the first in during the main 15 week period. And thanks since it's spring semester, we have a nice extra buffer zone for spring break. Um, so more detail on the no fault lateness policy. Basically, all you have to do to excuse work that's late is send me an email saying something like, hi, hi, I know assignment X is late. I haven't forgotten about it. I'm not dead. I'm, I plan to turn it in in Y days. Um, and if you don't send me that email, then the assignment gets set to a zero until you do send me the email. Um, and uh, that will be just set on the deadlines that are built into the course. All right. Uh, I'm going to be keeping regular virtual office hours at noon to one on weekdays. Um, I'm doing that in WebEx. The address is here. It's just WebEx, meet Jay Loftus. Um, it's probably the same kind of address that most of your instructors are using. And you can schedule any additional session with me you want by appointment, and it doesn't have to be during business hours. I mean, it can be evenings, weekends. Um, it's the COVID era, and so... We're all keeping strange hours. Grade components. There are four components to your grade. There are regular exercises. There are tests. There's a midterm paper and a final paper. The exercises are there to help you digest the material. And they're just going to be graded on completion. So these are going to be things like writing prompts. And I'll ask you things like, what are your associations with the word justice? And you just, you can say whatever your associations are, honestly. The point is to work through your own ideas. And then if you get it, if you do it, you get 100 points. And if you don't do it, you get zero points. Um, and the average of those 100s and those zeros is uh, your grade for that component of the course. Um, and so this is a chance to think through ideas for yourself, and it's a chance to get, um, uh, a, well, um, it's an easy way to get a lot of your grade in. The tests are multiple choice and short answer. They're going to be open book and open note. Um, so I've I, th I think that a lot of the test surveillance software that people use to uh, keep you from looking at your notes or that sort of thing during a test, it's just very intrusive. It's clunky. Um, it's a lot easier if you just look at, you're just able to look at your own notes. And so if you, I mean, if, you know, if you're taking notes on the book and you're keeping track of things and you go through that process of reading and taking notes, then you've done the education. Um, and so it's fine if you look at the notes. Um, you can also, uh, I don't recommend trying to Google things though. Um, a lot of what we'll be talking about in this course is specific to the context of this course, 
right? So even though there's not a lockdown browser, if you just Google up random information, you're not going to get um, something that is specific to what we're talking about here. So it really won't help you. Um, what will help you is keeping well-organized notes. All right, so there's a midterm paper and a final paper. The midterm paper uh, is going to be about 1,000 to 1,500 words. And it's going to be what we, what we call an application paper. You're going to take a concept in this course and apply it to a situation. And that, that could be a situation in the book or a situation maybe in your own life if you want to feel comfortable writing about your own life. Um, and uh, the grade comes from seeing how well you articulate the relationship between the concepts and the reality that you're describing. Um, the second paper is just like the first one. Um, in fact, it can be a modification of the first one. You can just um, change uh, the old paper, but you must have at least 1,000 new words. So you can't just move some commas around and call it a new draft. You have to really add material to it. All right. So next steps for this course. Introduce yourself. Um, there, like I said, there is an introductory forum. Um, and uh, you can just uh, give your names and pronouns and uh, whether or not you've had any experience with philosophy, that sort of thing. Um, there's a review sheet. You should download the review sheet um, and start reading because the focus is going to be on the book. And the review sheet will just help you keep track of things like characters and important concepts. As I said before, you must do something that shows up on this website in the first 14 days. Otherwise, you will be automatically dropped from the course. And the easiest thing to do is just say hi in the introductory forum. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I'm really looking forward to this semester. I've, uh, I've, I've been putting together videos gradually. I've got some from last semester. I've got some new ones. And um, uh, I think it's going to be a really fun uh learning experience.